Well, hello, and uh, thank you for tuning in uh, to this uh, presentation for RareX. RareX is essentially a project development company and an exploration company that works on the thematic of the green revolution, um, the global megatrend to decarbonization, particularly around the space of magnets for electric motors and electric generation and uh, the phosphate batteries. So this company was formed on a very specific mandate. The founding directors realized the amount of money that was starting to be spent in the net zero proposals of most Western governments. Audacious as they are, um, they have meant an incredible amount of investment is moving in to the green energy sector. And RareX was formed because of the fundamental belief in this transition. And that belief led to the acquisition of Cummins Range and some other tenements that support uh, the rare earth uh, side of this green energy revolution. Cummins Range was a known deposit uh, and it has been uh, worked on since specifically to find the rare earths because of the amount of money that automotive makers and electric uh, wind turbine manufacturers are putting into this space. And rare earths is used in the magnets that go into those generators for wind turbines or into those motors for electric vehicles. As we progressed Cummins Range, very poetically, we realized we had high quality phosphate within the resource and that phosphate is suited for the lithium iron phosphate battery market. And so on a very nice coincidence, we are essentially an electric vehicle raw material supplier, bringing rare earths for magnet motors and phosphate for the batteries. The batteries is what ties together the electric vehicles where our um, rare earths can go into the magnet motors with the rare earths that go into the um, wind turbine generators, because both of them need batteries for stability, batteries required for electric vehicles and batteries required to, to, to steady the grid uh, upon which those renewable energies support. So the batteries tie them together and the amount of money being spent now into the lithium iron phosphate battery market is extraordinary. And it's really um, getting up to the level of that which is being invested into the rare earth supply chains. So we sit on a very nice uh, project with access to both of these very green, clean energy um, raw materials. And after four years of um, since acquisition, uh, we are now a business that can present itself with three fundamental value propositions. We have the Cummins Range project. That is uh, a rare earth and phosphate project in northern West Australia. It's low risk, it's high value, it's got a fast uh, timeline to development, and it is underpinned by what is technically Australia's largest undeveloped rare earth resource. Then we have the rare exploration team. Rare exploration is our exploration upside that sits outside of the immediate Cummins Range project. And it's part of our investment portfolio in companies that suit a very similar thematic as to why RareX exists. And then to tie those together, we have the RareX team and the RareX board. These are very experienced team members, uh, which cover the full spectrum of resource uh, deposit identification, discovery, um, and project development, financing, and operations. So a very good team that can work across both the Cummins Range project and the portfolio of rare earth tenements and um, similar investments. So with this underpinning value proposition, it makes a very compelling time to invest. Cummins Range is 100% owned by RareX. Our tenements are 100% owned by RareX. And we have a good cash balance sheet and some good liquid investments. So despite the fact that we are in a trough at the moment, a pre-development trough magnified probably by global economic um, macro factors, this is a very good time to come into the business because we have a very exciting future ahead. Our exciting future is around the rare exploration 
discovery, excitement and investment uh, value accretion. And it's around Cummins Range, which is a near development opportunity. Cummins Range is our flagship project. It's low risk, it's low cost. It has a fast development track pathway ahead of it. And it's geographically very well positioned and mineralogically very well positioned. And that has been captured in the recent scoping study. The project sits 135 kilometers southwest of Halls Creek, uh, and it's very close to the mineral corridor um, linking uh, the project to Wyndham Port, which is predominantly bulk ready. The project will produce a magnet rare earth and a battery phosphate combined mineral concentrate in bulk. And we can do that quickly because in the first instance, we can monetize the overburden material. The scoping study defines this very well. And we are building up the supply chain to handle that bulk as we speak. All of the primary infrastructure is in place. So it's a matter of third party commercial contracts to ensure that supply chain is ready for the first material that we can move, which we anticipate to be the monetized overburden in 2025. Our agreements with the native title holders are very well advanced uh, and we're expecting regulatory submission uh, in 2024, in early 2024, uh, to support our operational plans by 2025. And financially, it's very well positioned as well with a good NPV and a good IRR across a range of pricing scenarios. We've been conservative with our cost inputs and we've considered sustaining capital and contingency capital and native title royalties and contributions and government taxes and royalties and my enclosure at the end of it all. We've gone with conservative pricing assumptions across uh, the phosphate battery minerals and the rare earth magnet minerals and we've discounted them both for market incentivization and value chain position. The project is underpinned by Australia's largest undeveloped rare earth uh, deposit. With 519 million tonnes um, at the displayed grade, it is one of the largest uh, rare earth deposits. If we normalise the grade to 1%, which is what that graph shows, we are Australia's third largest undeveloped rare earth deposit. So very significant. The deposit sits underneath the ground in that picture, which is our exploration camp at Cummins Range. And it daylights the surface, which is why we can monetize the overburden very quickly. As you can see across our peer group, we are underappreciated from a market capitalization perspective. But regardless of that, we are developing this project rapidly and we're going to go into operations in 2025. And we can do that because we have a fast track way of doing it. We've understood the resource and we will go back there for a little further resource definition, but fundamentally the resource is understood. We are going to fast track the pre-strip removal because we can monetize the pre-strip. So all of our environmental works and our approvals works and our contracts at the moment are focused on being able to monetize the overburden very rapidly. In parallel, we are doing the engineering work, the product work, uh, the offtake work and the approvals work for the installation of the Benny plant, which is when we start to really unlock the value of this project by producing phosphate and rare earth minerals together for the LFP and the uh, magnet rare earth space. So this paves the way for a very low cost, low risk, fast track way of delivering a critical minerals rare earth project in the Kimberley in Northern West Australia. With the project ultimately producing an electric vehicle feedstock mineral concentrate, which is suitable for the global mega trend. The mineral concentrate is apatite, which is the phosphate side and monazite, which is the rare earth side. The monazite is high in NDPR, which are the magnet metals. The phosphate is high in clean apatite, which is the feedstock for LFP batteries, once converted into phosphoric acid. And that's how we're going to send this pro product into the phosphoric acid business for them to separate into this very clean apatite um, leach and leaving the rare earth behind in the residue to send through to a monazite refinery. The rare earths that come off this project are suitable for magnets, for those very high strength, lightweight magnets that are used in electric motors and wind turbines. And the phosphate that comes from our very clean appetite leach is being used in 
a lithium ion phosphate battery space, which is a real big growing industry with a vast amount of future applications as cars transition to LFP batteries and as grid scale batteries transition. Interestingly, everyone knows about the rare earth value chain uh, constraints through China and um, many countries desire to diversify away from that concentration. The LFP battery story is in a very similar space with a vast amount of concentration through China and the desire of a lot of other parties, a lot of other countries to move those value chains away so they have more diversified base. And that's happening right now. That is why um, we think Northeast Asia is the perfect place to present this product. And that is why I was in Japan a few weeks ago, starting those connections with the South Koreans and uh, Japanese end users, OEMs and traders. So with all this said, with the scoping study behind us, we can compare ourselves to our um, peer group and we stack up very, very uh, favorably. Fundamentally, the top graph talks to our reserves. Um, we have a very material reserve relative to our peers and we have very comparable um, grades relative to our peers. This means we can produce a lot of material over a long amount of time. In fact, if you have a look at the second graph, that shows our capital intensity. That shows how much money it costs us to produce uh, TREO, total rare earth oxide. And it only takes us about 350 million Australian dollars to produce 12,000 tons of total rare earth oxide every year. And on top of that, we can produce uh, 170,000 uh, tons per annum of LFP grade phosphate. So it positions ourselves very favorably. And in fact, we are the lowest uh, capitally intense rare earth projects out there. Granted, some of those peers are entering the value chain at a different position, but fundamentally it costs us the least to deliver the most amount of TREO and we have the phosphate to boot. It's important to mention capital intensity because it should not be underestimated. The complexity and risk associated with building a full rare earth value chain from the outset. We can be different to that. We are planning to be different. We are planning to deliver this project in a very positively differentiated way that takes an awful lot of that risk away so that we can deliver it with good conscience and with a high probability of success. But we're not just all about Cummins range. We are also an exploration company. And the second part of our business is rare exploration. At the moment, whilst Cummins range is well defined, our geological team are able to move on to our portfolio of tenements that we've been quietly acquiring over the last year or so, particularly in the Kimberley, where we look for operational uh, and regional synergies, uh, but also more broadly, where we can bring in some technical synergies. And first off the bat in the priority list for rare exploration are the near mine targets at Cummins Range. Now, an independent geologist identified 15 anomalies on Cummins Range. We're homing that down to the top three to five targets. You can see in the picture there where we think um, those targets are, and they've been defined very recently with magnetic and gravity surveys, which will be released to market very soon. That means there's the potential to either increase the resource base of Cummins Range dramatically, or to provide additional products where we can leverage the Cummins Range development. So a really exciting time for the near mine work at site. And we'll be going to test those in the first quarter of 2024, once those targets are confirmed. The second priority for rare exploration is our Kimberley targets. We've got a number of tenements. Um, in these particular graphics, uh, we are looking at Maud Creek and Mounts Mansbridge. Both are Zena time. Mount Mansbridge is not far away from Brown's Range. It's on the Killikili formation. It offers a really exciting potential to get into the heavy rare earth side of the business. Um, and Maud Creek is a Kimberlite pipe with Zena time. And that's looking super exciting. As soon as that grant comes through, we'll be there creating targets for uh, inspection early next year. So these offer great regional synergies where we've become very familiar with operating up in the uh, Kimberley. Uh, and we can uh, tap into a lot of the work that we do with Cummins Range in a very synergistic, efficient way. But we also have tenements further south. The East Yilgarn projects 
provide us with the Kimberley off-season exploration programs. When the Kimberley uh, gets its rainy season during the summer, uh, these tenements here in the East Yilgarn are still accessible for us with great ease, and we'll be continuing um, to investigate their potential for uh, discoveries in the near future. So the rare exploration team have an exciting uh, few months ahead, leading to some exciting news flow uh, next quarter, certainly in the first half of 2024. But rare exploration is more than just about the uh, tenements that we've been acquiring um, in, uh, in the Kimberley and in the region. We've also got some very good investments uh, across three main companies, giving us access to copper, uh, to, uh, to lithium, uh, and to rare earth trading. So a really interesting part of the business. So to tie all this together, the Cummins Range project, the tenements, uh, the portfolio of tenements, and our investments, we've got a very good and valid team for this. The team want to build Cummins Range. They want to build a business that's um, highly valuable uh, and they want to do it the right way. There is no point in doing this um, if it weren't for going the right way about it from the beginning. Firstly, the board. The board are very senior. Uh, we've got Cam Henry, uh, who built the company Primero, which specializes in building and operating process plants. Uh, John Young founded uh, Pilbara Minerals. Sean Hardcastle, an excellent corporate lawyer. Um, Danny Goman has joined us as the most recent board member who brings exceedingly senior marketing sales and shipping uh, experience from the likes of uh, Rio Tinto and uh, FMG, most recently where he was uh, head of global marketing and sales. Um, and he also helped me in a previous business um, secure binding take or pay agreements uh, at the study phase for a junior operating in East Africa. And then this is led by Chairman Jeremy Robinson, who's an excellent corporate strategist. So a very, very good board, supported by a very competent uh, management team. Uh, the management team have got a lot of tier one operational experience, a lot of discovery experience behind them. They're all working together really, really well. Lu Zhang has joined the team as our metallurgist. Uh, and product engineer Kai Hoffman has recently joined a study and approval specialist. Guy Malang um, runs the exploration uh, and geology side of the business, supported by uh, Greg Wynn, both excellent um, at running remote operational sites uh, and working through uh, target generation and geology. And we also have um, some very senior consultants in Gavin Beer and Damien Krebs uh, backing up uh, the technical team. And everybody from the board to the management uh, want to do it the right way. We think it's so important um, that we have understood what matters to our stakeholders um, now and the stakeholders of the future to make sure that we uh, know the obligations and our own personal commitments to how we do business. And we think it's very important to be tracking ourselves against those commitments. And we're about to release our second sustainability report, which is a self-assessment on how we have performed relative to those commitments and obligations, not only because we need to, um, but because we want to. In the future, when we get strategic investment, strategic offtake and government support for this project, being able to show a track record of publicly disclosed performance against our own criteria that are aligned to international standards is going to be a very, very valuable piece. So everything we're doing is being done with this underlay of um, proper environmental and social uh, governance. And everything we do is a lot. Um, we have got a big few months ahead of us. We've got a big year ahead of us. Um, we've got something for everybody. If you're into project development, we have Cummins Range, which is going to be focused very much on delivering the monetized pre-strip in the short term and very quickly transitioning that to the beneficiation plant and the production of the rare earth and phosphate mineral concentrate that really drives the value to this project. So there will be a lot of milestones being met, both uh, technically and commercially over the near term to deliver on that project milestone. But we also have rare exploration for those that are interested in the discovery side of this uh, business. We have got our near targets, uh, near mine targets at Cummins Range. We've got our broader targets in the Kimberley. We've got our East Yilgarn targets and we've got our investments, which are being curated 
um, and managed to provide significant value upside. So it's a very exciting time to be a part of this business. And I want to thank you very much uh, for paying attention to this presentation. Uh, please follow us. Uh, please follow us on the ASX, on our socials, and on our investor hub. And we look forward to you engaging with us as we go on this journey together.